Hey guys, welcome to Strike Picks online course, More Than Moonshot. The goal here is to teach you how to make professional level spirits much smaller equipment. I do want to say that all federal law does prohibit production of ethanol or spirits of any type without proper permits. So please do not use this information to make spirits for personal use or resale use. Now that's aside, let's move on to the episode and let's have a good time. Hey guys, welcome to episode 11. We're really moving along and learning a lot. Feel better? I thought so. So guys, let's talk about liquor classifications. Basically, this is how the government tells you or what, how it's allotted of what liquor you are producing. To give you an example, bourbon. It's the American spirit. It is our national spirit. To be bourbon, it needs 51% corn. It needs to be aged in an unused American oak barrel that is charred. That's the classification. To make a gin, you have to start with the GNS, then you have to have juniper in it, and it uses a botanical, which there's multiple ways of doing it, which we saw in a few past episodes. Basically, this one is going to be a short episode because I want to tell you where you can get this information. TTB.gov. That's TTB.gov. It's a tax and trade bureau. This is the organization, or part of the government that organizes our industry. These are also the people that, if you go make liquor at home, that will start coming for you. You don't want to be a TTB agent. They have what they call the TTB.gov BAM, Building Materials List. This right here is going to give you every classification when it comes down from tequilas to any type of liquor produced. This is something that we often need to go and check so we know exactly what type of spirits and what you can call it when it comes to classifications. From liqueurs, vodkas, all of those are described perfectly. So, I want to tell you a little story. And this one is a favorite of mine. I want to tell you where bourbon came from. So all of those out there, and I hear them and see them often, that tell me bourbon has to be made in Kentucky. About Bourbon County, that is of course incorrect. There's a lot of sources of people that know a whole lot more than me that this is the story that they'll tell you. So, you have corn liquor. Corn liquor has been, has been produced in eastern Ohio, western Kentucky, in Virginia since the early 1700s, 1800s. Um, it was used as medicine, a form of preservation with corn. It was a useful tool to have around, especially when it was to hospitals. You could use it as a form of medicine, antiseptic, and tell you clean the rust off your plow. Corn liquor was being produced all over the place. There were no form of bourbons at the time. They started to ship this down to further to the south, and in particular, Louisiana. So what they would do is they would load this corn liquor into barrels. Now barrels were a serious commodity. There were no plastics, there were no, no buckets. No ways of holding this liquor other than barrels specifically, so they were a true commodity when you were trying to move commerce back and forth. So as basically barrels would come up from the ocean into, call it uh, Kentucky, they would have like salted fish and salted hams, form of preservation, and they didn't want to waste the barrel. So what they did was actually started to char the barrel to get all that salt and draw that flavor out. And you could only clean it out so well. So then they started pouring liquors and whiskeys in there and they would move it back down to Mississippi. And it, take, it would take about six to eight weeks for that barrel to move from the upper part of Mississippi down to the lower part of Mississippi where they would serve it in the various ports that they dropped it off. And specifically in New Orleans where everybody knows that you like to drink and party. It's been like that since day one in New Orleans. Uh, they started drinking these whiskeys that were put, put into these charred barrels to get the salt out of it. And these whiskeys became known as Bourbon Street Whiskeys. They became known as Bourbon Whiskey, and of course today just as uh, referred to as Bourbon. So that's where the bourbon comes from. That's a good little tidbit to your next dinner party when that guy who thinks he knows it all, or lady thinks she knows it all, says, oh, it has to come from Kentucky. Actually, the best bourbons, I believe, are coming from the state of Colorado, and some of the highest rated bourbons in the world are coming out of Japan. So that gives you a great testament to that. So guys, keep drinking, keep making, and I'll see you in the next one. Two minutes. Thank you.